Yep. Yep. So we've talked about functional food, but how about those guys like F and B? Those guys who are selling cha kway tiao, wonton mee, uh, so the, even the lower, ends, the lower ends or the yeah. middle ends or the high ends? Okay, so it really depends. Um, okay, so in the low, lower ends, I think that's going to be tough, man. I think they're heavily affected. Um, I was telling you I was in Penang early this year. And dude, Penang is different, man. Penang is so different. And before we talk about a solution, I just want to address the context and the environment that's happening there. Like, you know, you know, there are some hawker stalls, or there are some places that you go to because they're just so famous and so delicious. You have to wait 30 minutes or an hour, and then some of them, they'll sell out by like 9 o'clock in the morning. You know some of these places in Penang, right? And they don't have lines anymore. They used, it used to be like, you need to fight very hard to get a seat. Now you can just go there and you can get a seat. There's a plenty and abundant of seats. So those people, I actually have no idea about how, how, how we can actually help them. I think the best way they can do is, I mean, not, not every answer is online because some of the food like Chak Kway Teow, the moment you actually get the delivery or takeaway, the, the, the texture is different. And then you would rather go and buy other things like NW, Texas chicken and things like that, right? Why would you want to order like a food that will go soggy and doesn't taste as great, right? When you bring it home. Do you have any solution for these people? I, I echo what you just shared, man. Uh, I was in... In Penang, actually, in January, and and my girlfriend brought me. She's from Penang, and she brought me to this chow hotel. She told me, in the past, you got a queue. The day we went, we were the only table, and the, the only tau table. Ke, oh no! We were the only table, and then the tauke actually came and chit chat with us, and then she told me, I'm so surprised the tauke came chat with us because this tauke are very excellent. And what when we you? left, the was like, yeah, the talking was like, hey, I uh, hope you all come back, yeah, all right. I, I, I think this crisis has taught entrepreneurs to humble down, especially those that were previously doing extremely well, right? So if you look at the bright side, it teaches us teaches us a lot of moral uh, uh, and ethics as well, right? Like humble down, right? Don't be as action as you were. But I, I actually questioned my girlfriend as well because there was there's this uh, prawn noodle which I really like at, at SS2. And I said, why do they not go into grab food? And she said the exact same reason like you see. But I think, right, uh, during this very difficult period, we still want that taste. Uh. We know, uh, right? Delivery confirmed won't taste as good. But we still miss that taste. And taste is always very subjective, right? If you miss that taste, that taste is that taste. I try to order another prawn noodle, can never give me that taste. Yeah, yeah so I, I think number one, the, the interesting thing is uh, most of them are still not on grab food or all this food delivery, which is uh, actually quite surprising to me, right? Their complaints is I have to pay 30%, but my thought is why not you just add your drinks in and then you rather than price it in the past $6, you price it at, let's say, you add some stuff in, uh, add a side dish and add a drink in, you price it at 11 to $12. Uh, people on grab food, they, they really buy things at around average, but per meal is around 10 to $20, sometimes 25 right? So why not you just bundle up your offer and then you just bring in the cash first because it's, it's not only about the customers wanting to eat your stuff, but it's also about you surviving. Right, cash Wait, John, team, right? John, I just want to ask you, you have so, so much experience at F&B, right? Like, do these people that use GrabFood, uh, if I'm a, I'm, I'm a vendor, I'm selling food, right? Do they get customers' details, like name, email, phone number, things like that? Uh, I, I don't really get involved with operations. I was involved with the crowdfunding of it. I'm not really sure if the guys in Grab has their database. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as I know, Faith has it. Uh, but Faith is not in delivery, unfortunately. So I'm not very sure about Grab and also food panda yeah mm, i wonder if they get the, the details because if they have the details the, the the future becomes easier for them so i would rather sacrifice the 30 percent let's say the first month i'm just on every bp uh what, what, what was the other one uh, food panda grab i'm just on everyone and i'm just accumulating bias list and i would just rather sacrifice my margin make no money but i'm getting my bias list and then what I do is that I will just add them to like a, like a database system and then I will actually go. And database system, a lot of people think it's expensive. Guys, MailChimp is free. <laughs> so don't, please don't say that it's expensive. 
And the only thing that you need to do is a little bit of hard work, writing them an email, maybe making some graphics on Canva to make your food look exciting, right? But if every single day I send an email out, today's special, 77 or 888 or 99, or today's uh, Father's Day or Mother's Day, like order and, and provide this, it'll be better because I'm on uh, a few um, FMB. Uh, I'm sure you heard of uh, Oriental Group. I'm sure you heard of uh, some big sushi omakase place, right? I'm on their databases. And they always follow up with me almost on a daily basis. What is a daily menu? What's special today? And it's so easy for me because like sometimes when we go into grab food and food panda, right, there's so many things to look at and you get really like in a position where, you know, you remember you go to a Chinese restaurant and you have like 500 things to order and then you end up choosing the same thing that you always order because you're just having this selection dilemma. I'm having that with grab food and food panda right now. Every, every lunch and dinner, I'm like, oh, screw it. I have to go pick something to eat. Like I, I feel that's a torturous process now. But if I'm in a database and you tell me today, Desmond, because you're our esteemed customer, you are our fantastic customer, you ordered chicken rice last week, this week, if you order today, I will give you a free fish ball on the side. I don't know, right? That makes me make the decision a lot easier. Okay, we're ordering this today because I get free fish ball. Even though it's probably like 20 cents fish ball, I don't care. Let's do it right now. Makes decision making a lot easier for me too. I'm just surprised because if they are getting the customer database, I think they should use it. I wonder if they do it. Because if they do it, that would be fantastic. Because they no longer need food panda, they no longer need grab food. Because in the future, they can pretty much do their own specials, you know, and they contact basically going direct to consumer instead of having a middleman involved. By the way, John, I, we I, we're running dry, so yeah. let's let's cheers. By the way, John, <laughs> my face is really red, man. <laughs> we can't see it. We can't see it. The lighting on your in your room is perfect. I, I think one company that is doing pretty well in that is Nandos. Right, uh, I receive none of those uh, SMS very yes. often. Hmm. Yeah, but many people always have this perception that I have to use GrabFood, I have to use Foodpanda. Yeah. But to me, right, even you use GrabFood and Foodpanda, you're just relying them on the traffic that we have on GrabFood and Foodpanda. Right. Um, I'm also seeing some very good FMB businesses that are doing very well on Facebook. In fact, I just ordered a hot pot on, on Facebook, and, and the reason is because their soup was very different. Right, um, on Facebook, I think it's a very competitive market, but it is still the place to go when you want to access to the right traffic. Yeah. Are you talking about Facebook and, ads, live stream, or what is it? Oh, uh, the one I bought Hotpot was actually Facebook ads. I saw Facebook ads, uh, and it wasn't their own ad. I think they paid someone to do a review on them, and then I read the review, and I thought it was good. I don't know if they paid or not, but the review was good. I bought it. I had to pay for the Lala move and the, the ninja van of equivalent. Yeah. And to me, it was okay. And, and with, if they do that, they don't have to pay that 30% to grab for anymore. And they have the, my database and they were following up with me. And I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you think yeah. about it, right, for hot pot business, they're struggling right now. But think about what, what you're talking about. And then we're adding the quiz, quiz equivalent to it. Like, let's say you're planning to order hot pot, but then you find it very difficult to set it up and everything. Right? What if? We send them a, a form, fill up the form. Tell me what you like. You like herbal chicken, you like spicy, you like uh, Sichuan style of spices or you fill up the form and then we custom made based on how many people are eating for you. We, we prescribe your dinner for you. We set it up, we send we send like uh, everything. You just need to follow our instructions. Like Ikea, right? Like you, you buy your things and you assemble it. So we send everything to you. You don't need to worry about it. You assemble it based on how we tell you. I think that would be fantastic. I just think that yeah, you're, you're right. I tell you, right, I noticed this. I don't, I'm not sure if you would agree with this. During bad times or during times like this, these entrepreneurs are getting to a point where they are, they, they cannot think of new ideas. They cannot be caught up because they are not in risk-taking mode. They are not in growth mode. So they are in a mode where I need to survive. I need to like, die, die also must make some money to pay bills or something, you know? So, which is why I think joining mastermind groups, because you know you have a mastermind groups with perfect, with amazing people inside. It's so important because sometimes, right, you, you, have, you can have like a consultant like us come in and point you to the right direction. And then you'll be like, oh, how come I never think about this? How come I'm so stupid and never thought about ideas like this? Like last year, there's a few businesses that we saved. They couldn't spend money on ads because they said, Desmond, I know you're going to save Facebook ads, but we don't have budget. So tell me what to do. But luckily, they have email lists. Luckily, they have the, uh, e uh, phone numbers. So we were relying on those data, reaching out to the customers and selling them. And that's how they're able to survive through and they're still alive today because of that. If they didn't do that, they would have closed down by Christmas last year. Because at the end of the day, right, hiring a consultant is very, very important. 
being in a mastermind group is even more important with the fact that you have different people to bounce ideas. You can learn from other people that are not just in survival mode, but also in thriving mode. Because not everyone is surviving right now. There are companies, there are entrepreneurs that are thriving right now. And uh, John, I know you, you know a few people and a few of your mastermind members are doing extremely well during this crisis as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so we came up with this topic a few days ago, right? Earlier this week. And so interesting. Yesterday, I had two meetings. And the first meeting I had was with this guy. His business is only three years old, but they're doing 20 million last year. On the third year, I, and I thought it was crazy. Wow. 20 mil. I said, how do you do 20 mil a year selling seafood online? Mm. And he told me, go and check out my Facebook live. And when I saw, I, I thought it was crazy. Thousands of people are actually watching. Right? And I, when I saw what he did, it looked simple. But we who have done pitching on stage, we who have done pitching on Zoom, we know that there's a lot of art to it. It looks so yep. simple, right? I tell a story, I, tell, I give you a content, and then I tell you I have a program to sell. It looks so simple. It's so simple, everyone could have done it. But, but not many people can succeed in doing it because there's actually a formula and you got to practice that formula, right? And for him, he shared with me the kind of art and science behind everything that he do. Uh, I, I thought it was very impressive. Uh, and and he's talking about now he not now that he has around twenty mil sales they have they have been growing, they are now exploring uh, selling on Lazada, they are selling on Shopee Life, and he was showing me or uh, he said I said Shopee Life got people buy uh. then he opened his phone and he showed me he said this is happening right now, and then he showed me like Habib, right was selling jewelries on Shopee Life, mm -hmm. and then he showed me another uh, another company never heard before. Uh, forgot what that guy was selling already. And there was 5,000 views on Shopee Live. Wow. Wow. 5,000 views on the afternoon. That was, I think, around 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. And he said, yes, this is happening right now. People are spending money. The only question is, if they're not spending with you, who are they spending money on? That's, that's a good question yeah. to ask because I think I think yeah. the thing that we need to understand is we always talk about right now we are in an attention economy. And if you can garner attention and you can get eyeballs to your presentation, 